Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm teaching you five forces, five card forces out of 100. I've already taught 20 of them, and if you missed any of them, I'll leave a link down below to a video, a playlist video, so you can catch up. Alright, so just a precursor, um, all the forces in today's video will require some practice. I mean, they're pretty heavy with the sleight of hand. But I know you guys can do them, and uh, you know, let's get, let's get right into it. All right, so this first force is called Force Feed by Stephen Minch. Now, this particular variation is by Peter Marshall. It comes out of Apocalypse, all right? So as per usual for these forces, our force card for all of them will be the Ace of Spades. And this is what Force Feed looks like, all right? So what we do, we just uh, them over cards like this and have the participant uh, say stop any time as we do. So maybe right here on this card. Now, look. How do we stop the card before or after we would have the Ten of Diamonds or the Jack of Diamonds? But you stopped it right here on the Ace of Spades. All right, so the FC or the Force card starts on the bottom of the deck. And what you're going to do is establish a break uh, above it by a pinky pull down or riffling your thumb. Either way, you want to get a break, uh, a thumb break above it like this on the bottom of the deck. So what you're gonna do is hold the deck in middle grip like this, and then what I like to do is cut a small packet at first, and then start running cards like this, and then I say, look, as I do this, just say stop any time. Now, once they do, what's gonna happen is say, look, you stopped on this card here, and then you say, if you had stopped a card before or after, it would have been. Now, what you're gonna do is, as you go to take this card off and show it, you actually unload the broken card on top of this packet, all right? So at the same time, sort of like a biddle count, all right? So at the same time you do this, you actually unload that force card, the ace of spades, on top of this packet, all right? So the uh, pinky engages that broken card like this and steals it onto the packet as you thumb over this card here and show it uh, the ace of hearts, put that down, and then you just thumb this over, which is now the force card, and you, see, you show this card now, look, or you could have had the five of spades, but you stopped on the ace of spades. So what you are simulating is this, all right? So look, you stopped on this card here. Had you stopped uh, one card before or after, you would have the nine of hearts or the seven of hearts, but you stopped on the force card. Now, uh, I'll do that one more time in slow motion, all right? So again, get the break on the bottom card, and then uh, you just do it, cut over a packet, them over singles, and then they stop any time. Once they do, you point to the card here. That that means they know that this is the card that you're going to show them in a minute, all right? So that just uh, eliminates any confusion, all right? So you stop on this card here. Now at this point, you say, look, had you stopped on one card before or after, you would have had dot, dot, dot. To the biddle still uh, taking that broken card onto the packet like this, you could have had... You know, the four of diamonds, thumb that card down. You could have had the jack of hearts, but you stopped on this card here, the ace of spades. So do me a favor, as I spread cards like this, uh, just point to any card that you want, all right, any card at all, maybe that one uh, right there. Let's take a look at your card. Ah, the ace of spades. Let's just go and put that right there and give it a dribble like this. And you know what? We have the ace of spades right back on top. So this is the MC spread double, or the Michael Close uh, spread double, all right? So what happens is you set your force card at a position that is comfortable for you to cull, all right? So it'll be, for me, either a four or five from top, and then that'll be where your force card is. So you spread through, and you just cull the card. As you say, look, as I spread the cards like this, uh, just point to any one. And as I say that, I've culled the card, so it's riding underneath the spread right now. All right, so you spread through, and when they touch the card, what you're going to do is up-jog it like this, and then you're going to up-jog this whole packet um, like this. Now that cold card is right now under the card they touched, all right? So when you up-jog it, and you square like this, what you have is their touched card and the whole up jogged upper packet and with your index finger you're touching that force card because of the coal. Now what's going to happen is that you're going to contact this entire upper packet sort of in a biddle grip type uh, position like this with your index finger and thumb and you're going to scoot it back. Now what's going to happen is that your index finger is going to uh, make that force card align with the uh, touched card. All right, so this is exposed view. You're like this and that sort of moment happens where they just align and they're out jogged like this. So what you can do now is just pull that double out of the deck like this and turn it face up on top and you have a double that is actually forced. 
I know that might seem rather difficult and a little bit confusing, so I'll run through it one more time, all right? So what's going to happen, you spread through, uh, you call the forest card, in this case, fifth from top. As you say, just point to any card, and that's being written under as you spread. So they point to a card. At this point, the cold card is just loaded under that touch card as it's being updrawed like this. So you can see that happening now. As you updraw it, that's just being written under as you updraw the entire packet, all right? So you want to make sure the tip of the index finger is touching the force or the force card or the cold card in this case. So more of an exposed view, what's going to happen now is you, again, you just contact the upper packet, sort of a middle grip uh, position like this, as you scoot the whole thing back. And this middle finger is going to be um, on the upper edge of the uh, card as you scoot the whole thing back. Those cards will align like this. You can see that happening there. And then you'll fill it on your uh, middle finger as, as it butts up against it to it into alignment. All right, so now you can just uh, take your hand, pinch the double, and just pull it right out of the deck, turning it face up like this. And you have that Ace of Spades Force card. And from there, you can do anything you want. Put it right back in, snap your finger, and it's right back on top. That's a lame example, but you can do uh, anything you want to do that requires a force and a control. So do me a favor, as I drop cards like this, just say stop anytime that's happening, all right? So any card at all is possible. So go ahead and say stop, stop right there. So you could have said stop in literally any one of these cards, but you said stop on one card in particular. Let's take a look. In fact, the card we're looking for is the Ace of Spades. Let's see how lucky you were today. Ah, the Ace of Spades. All right, so this force um, is as old as the hills and it doesn't really have a name. It's just uh, the old, a palma card and it's forced all right so what's going to happen is that uh, the force card is on top of the deck and you're going to dribble the cards on the table and uh, you ask your spectator to just say stop as you drop cards like this and in my opinion you should never say magician -y terms to the person you're performing for like dribble or stuff like that because it, when you say stuff like that they don't know what you're talking about so you always want to make your instructions as clear as possible including the words you choose to say in this case you just say drop cards instead of dribble cards it's just a minor touch but i think it helps all right so you want to say like as i drop cards like this just say stop anytime so you do that yeah just say stop anytime now you would feel tempted to palm the card off immediately, the top card, which is the force card, but there's no reason to, for this hand to come over to, to the deck, all right? So what you're gonna do is you say, look, you could, assess, you could assess up on any one of these cards and just dribble this packet. Now this hand has a reason to sort of come over and square these cards up and put it over here because, well, they're kind of messy, so you want to square them up and be tidy, all right? So, so you, you say, look, you could assess up on any one of these cards. Now what's gonna happen is don't square it up yet because this hand is going to come over and just palm this top card off right off the top of the packet, all right? So it's exposed view. All you're going to do is come over, and from this angle, I mean, everything is hidden, all right? So you're just going to come over and sort of push this card off like this, and that card just pops into palm like this, all right? So what's going to happen is you just set the deck over here. It's sort of a spin at like 90 degrees, so this hand is sort of like has a reason to hold be held this way all right so this hand comes over here uh stops the deck down and then just grabs these cards up depositing the palmed card drop that there do the same action to put that on top and you have your uh your palmed forced card all right so one more time start to finish fully exposed all right so as i drop cards like this just say stop anytime stop look you, you could say stop on any one of these cards but uh, you said stop on one card in particular all right which happens to be uh, the card we're looking for today is actually the ace of spades let's see how lucky you were ah the ace of spades so for this any card can be chosen all right so as i uh, as i spread the deck just point to any one that you want this one right here let's see which one it is oh the ace of spades just the one i wanted to take so this is the Bottom Deal Exchange by Ed Marlowe, sometimes called the Spread X Force. All right, so I've taught it before on my channel, but I want to um, give you guys some more refinements and some nuances and some things that I'm probably make it easier for you, okay? So when I say Bottom Deal Exchange, uh, don't have a panic attack. You don't actually have to do a bottom deal. It's just called the Bottom Deal Exchange because you uh, it starts out on the bottom of the deck pretty much, all right? So, but the you're going to sort of buckle the card like a bottom deal. So in a sense, this move can sort of get you ready when the time is right for you to practice a bottom deal. 
All right, so FC on the bottom of the deck, and then what you're gonna do is spread the deck like this, and you're going to have them touch any card. And what's gonna happen is it's going to look like the card they touched is the card that you show them. And you, you're going to simulate this, remember that card, but it's going to be forced, it's going to come off the bottom of the deck, not where they actually took it, all right? So how do you do that? So let's do an overview of uh, how this move looks, all right? So what's, we'll take this uh, part of the deck away. Now what's gonna happen is you're going to hold the deck like this, all right? So you wanna have your index finger sort of wrapped over the front edge, and you're going to sort of um, push toward yourself against the base of your thumb so you have a tight grip on the cards like this, all right? So what's gonna happen is with your middle finger, you're going to buckle that bottom card, all right? So you're going to contact uh, the bottom card at the corner here with the pad of your middle finger, all right? So what's going to happen is you're just going to push that card. You're going to just sort of curl your middle finger in, causing that card to bend. You can see that bending. That's called buckling the card. And the reason why you want to buckle that card is because if you were to try to sort of push that bottom card out like this with your middle finger, it's not going to there's too much friction, it's not gonna come out. So if you buckle it first and then push out, it's gonna be a lot easier. And that's sort of the mechanics of a, how a bottom deal works. All right, so that's why it's called the bottom deal exchange. All right, so you're, you wanna have that index finger really on a tight grip, pushing the packet towards the base of your thumb like this, all right? So into your palm like this, all right? So the cars aren't going anywhere out of this grip, all right? So what's gonna happen, is in this grip, you take your look at with this grip, the cards are already sort of buckling anyway, all right? So it's very easy to take the pad of your middle finger, contact the corner right here, just right beside your next finger, just push up towards yourself, curl that in, and you'll get that buckle. As soon as you get that buckle, not a moment after, I mean, you want to get push it out immediately after you get that buckle like this, all right? So that's already pushed over now that's hidden in not only the spread, but also the fact that this card is pushed over like this. So that uh, sort of in alignment and that is a, that's, that's a bottom bill, all right? So yes, yeah, good way to practice. So before you uh, try to do this move, I'd say just take about half the deck or maybe a third and then um, push this card over like this. And remember the grip with your index finger pushing toward the base of your thumb, index finger buckles the card, pushes out, and then you just, you just do that, Re just repeat that move all day, all right? Boom, buckle, and push. Boom, buckle, push, all right? So just do that until you feel comfortable, and then we can move on to the spread X force or the bottom deal exchange force. So this is essentially what happens uh, in the whole spread for the force, all right? So again, this card will be pushed over automatically because of the force, right? Or because of the spread. And then what you're gonna do is do the buckle, push out, and then this hand takes this top card along with the bottom card, so this this is what it looks like. So you just do this, all right? So they take that together like this, the top and the bottom card often shows that card. But in the spread, it looks like you just take the card they touched, all right? So here we go. They, uh, you spread the deck and they touch any card. Now you do the buckle, and then with your thumb, just take that card they touched and sliding out that card with your fingers like this, just like that, turn it over, and that's the force. So I'll do that as best as I can, uh, fully exposed, all right? So they spread, you spread through, they touch any card, you're right here, and that gets buckled and pushed out. Uh, this hand takes the top card of this packet plus the bottom card, like this, and turns over, palm down, and then that's the force. I hope you can dig it. So for this, I will uh, take out sort of a prediction uh, to use for the future, right? So let's say this card right here. So what I'll do is I'll just put that under the box for now. And then what I'll do is I'll have you uh, make some predictions as well, all right? So as I spread through, just uh, touch a couple of cards, maybe one, two, uh, let's, let's go three this time, all right? So three cards randomly chosen by you. Let's see what they are. Let's see, first card, Ace of Diamonds, pretty good card. So what else do we have? Uh, the Ace of Clubs, two aces, wasn't expecting that. Let's see, oh, come on, three aces? Are you a magician? Uh, <laughs> that's really cool, I was not expecting that. But uh, what's even stranger is the fact that I also picked an ace.
So this is the drop switch addition by Ed Marlowe. Okay, so what's going to happen is that uh, it's a multiple card force, and usually you wouldn't want to just do the aces because that just telegraphs that it's a force. All right, so how could they pick the four aces unless it was a force? All right, so that's impossible, and it just says, "Hey, I made you pick these cards." So you want to uh, come up with a way in a routine sort of presentation. Uh, that says these are just random cards that you could have chosen out of just a shuffle deck, and then we'll roll with that. So how about this? Let's say you had a like a prediction, like a written prediction on a piece of paper or a business card uh, with a total of 16. So you just write down the number 16, and that'll be your prediction, all right? So now you just take out some cards that total 16, all right? In this case, I just have a 10, a 4, and a 2, and then make 16. So uh, what you can do is have the participant, you know, the deck a mix. Or so they think they are giving them a mix, all right? So what's going to happen is you put your force cards on top of the deck and you ask them to give it, you know, one of those old uh, deal and shuffle t sort of mixing procedures. So just set, ask them to start dealing cards face down. Once they deal past three, so that you can deal, you can take cards from anywhere in the deck. And then anytime you want, just give the pack a shuffle and then they can deal in groups if they want to. This really feels, and uh, this really feels like they're, they're mixing the deck. But what they've done is, um, they really have mixed the deck, but they've managed to control uh, the force card to the bottom of the deck, which is exactly where you need them. So now you just take the deck back and say, look, there's no way I could possibly have controlled any cards in this deck, but uh, let's make it even more random. And I want you to just uh, pick three of these cards that you just shuffled, all right? <laughs> so you just spread through and have them touch any three cards. So the first one is outjogged. Second one is outjogged, third one is outjogged as well, all right? So you're just outjogging the cards as they touch them. Now, you want to spread through it till the end and then sort of sight count three cards and then get a break above them with your pinky as you close up the deck. So what's going to happen is you sort of uh, take your uh, middle finger and kick them towards the side, towards uh, your thumb side, like this, so they're angle jog now. And what's going to happen is you t uh, transfer that pinky break to a thumb break as you take the deck in middle grip like this. So you have that nice thumb break, which is also covered by the outjogged cards. All right, so what's going to happen is you just strip them out like this. And just take your thumb and your in the base of your index finger and sort of clamp down on the top of the front edge of the cards like this, sort of strip them out like this. And then what you're going to do is seemingly put them on top of the deck but what's going to happen is you drop the broken cards on top of them as you do that all right so so it just looks like you're going to bring them to the top really you just drop the cards on top as you do that like this and just put them on top which now you have all three force cards on top and then nobody's so wiser like it looks perfect all right so you say look let's take a look at the cards you got we've got a 10 a two and a four. I say nobody could have known beforehand uh, what these cards would be, especially since you shuffle the whole deck first. So now you say, look, let's uh, take these cards and let's total the total them up. All right. So we have a, a ten, a two that makes twelve, and a four that makes sixteen. Would you be impressed if I knew that you would pick sixteen? And they say, yeah, cool. I knew you'd pick sixteen. But you want proof that I knew that you would uh, choose these cards that would add up to 16. Now, like the badass that you are, you just pull it right out of your pocket and say, boom, 16. And just walk away. <laughs> All right, guys, so as always, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me, and at the end of the day, you know, I really hope that you learned something new and you got some value out of this video, whether it be just my my charm or just uh, learning something new uh, from the books. Totally joking. I don't really think I'm charming. In any case, uh, have practicing. I love you guys. All that stuff.